Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's your man, Dame DNYDC, host of the Two Mics Up podcast. Yo, look, we back again, man. Brand new episode. And, you know, today, as you can tell, fan a little New Yorkish, you know, even though we ain't really been living up to the hype this year. Uh, and today's special guest is going to gonna be sitting here with me. We're going to talk some all-stars. We're going to talk some sports. Uh, you know, NBA All-Star was a little more than All-Star weekend was about a week and a half ago, you know, from today's episode and just want to follow up but before i get into that you know i, I want to share some news and some information uh you know here with you know regarding two mics up and, and what's going on so you know every now and then we like to you know get into the news and we like to com connect the community to what's going on you know we're trying to stay committed to creating something greater you know my sister my b and i partner uh over at national harbor she's putting together a fundraising event, you know, Cinco de Mayo 2022. Make sure you save the date. You know, Youth Empower Me Foundation is really putting together. I mean, this is going to be an amazing event for a future event. So come out, get your early bird tickets. You know, you get three hours of play, fajitas, you know, bottomless drinks. And, you know, for those of you who are really big supporters, you know, go ahead and get yourself a sponsorship package, man, and really help this event. For more info, visit youthempowerme.org. They're doing th great things. And like I said, if you're here in the DMV, you know, make sure you come out and support, man. Cinco de Mayo, man. It's a great day to come out with your friends and your family and have a little fun. And to continue on, you know, we're now at the back half of season three here, two mics up. Season four is coming up. You know, we're opening up the doors now for show sponsors. If you want to advertise here on two mics up, you know, now's the opportunity. You know, we're opening up new markets. Uh, you know, we believe here that if you can't sell it, it's probably because you're not visible. And I like to say to everybody, you know, can you say TV? Because season four, Two Mics Up is working on something special. Just keep in mind, TV, new market opportunities. Get yourself visible to go ahead and sell your goods and services to the community. Now, back to the topic of today, NBA All-Star, All-Star Weekend, second half of the season. I'm going to bring to you all uh, today's guest. His brother is joining me, you know, from down in Tobacco Road. He, I think this brother knows a little something about a little basketball, uh, everything that's going on down in the triangle. You know, got some historic teams, you know, Duke, North Carolina, North Carolina State. Uh, hell, look, at, look, the Charlotte Hornets for real, bro, is really putting in work this year. Uh, we're going to touch on that. But before I continue, I want to allow uh, this gentleman, my brother Desmond Johnson, Desmond, take a few minutes, man. Introduce yourself to our audience and to our listeners. And give us a little background about yourself, my brother. Hey, man. Uh, appreciate having me on, for starters. Uh, really appreciate being on the program. I'm uh, Desmond Johnson. I'm the owner of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. We're based here in uh, North Carolina, in the heart of North Carolina. Um, we specialize in a lot of live sporting events here in the area. Uh, we are actually the home of North Carolina A&T Athletics. Oh, wow. so, you can, okay. so when you listen to a uh, an ANT football game or a ANT men's basketball game or baseball broadcast uh, on the radio or online. It's us producing that oh, for them. Uh, we do their coaches shows. We do a lot of Aggie podcasts. We do a lot of different projects with them. Um, we are heavy in the high school scene here. Uh, there's a lot of four star, five star kids here in the triad of North Carolina. Wow. Uh, our home base is the Greensboro High Point, Winston-Salem area. Um, we try to stay pretty hyper local, but we do a lot of stuff. Uh, with the Charlotte Hornets, uh, we have a lot of studio uh, sport talk shows that are centered around where we are here. Because uh, mm -hmm. there's not a lot uh, here that do, that do that. A lot of it gets pumped in nationally, so right. a lot of our local teams get ignored. Um, so we're filling a, a niche there with Tobacco Road. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of good programming. Most of our sports talks Friday afternoon and Saturday mornings, uh, and you can get to that Tobacco Road Sports Radio dot com. Um, a lot of our live uh, sporting events, of course, are in the evenings as well. Mm -hmm. And it's starting to flush out where we're putting stuff on in the afternoons also. So uh, definitely check us out if you want to get a little bit of an alternative from uh, the ESPN or, or Fox Sports or any of the national outlets out there. Uh, definitely check us out at TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com. Man, look, that's dope. First of all, uh, I want to give you a big round of applause for the work that you're doing in that area. Because you're right, there's a lot that's going on uh, in so many pockets of of our communities uh, that go on scene. And we'll make sure, uh, Desmond, that we put your information down here in the link. 
uh, so that people can go ahead and, and check you guys out and support you. Uh, and, and this is why I'm proud to be able to, you know, share my platform with other people who look just like me and doing work just like me. So uh, kudos Absolutely. to you and continued success uh, to you and everything that you're doing. Uh, but I want to I want to get into the NBA and talk a little all star. I mean, I want to start off, really, Desmond, like I want to talk about some of these trades, brother. And, you know, everybody looks at, you know, who came out on top, uh, who maybe got the best fit. Uh, and I'm just going to throw out a couple. And I'm going to start with, I mean, obviously, we want to start with some of the big name uh, trades that happened. And I'm just going to jump in full body, heck with two feet. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump in with this whole Ben Simmons and Seth and, and Andre going to Brooklyn for Harden and Millsap to Philly. And I'm I'm interested on your take on this one here, man. Um, I think it's great for uh Philadelphia. I think it's mm. gonna make Philadelphia the front runner in the East. I, okay. I hear all this talk about Brooklyn and them coming back. They last time I checked, they are the eighth seed right now. Right. They are potential falling into the the play in tournament. Right. Uh, the thing with Brooklyn is that they can't get all their stars on the court at the same time, mm -hmm. and it's been like that really since Durant and Kyrie got there. So right. uh, this notion that talking heads give about you know well once they get all together and once they get a chance to play i'm like well it's going on two seasons now like and it's at a point where i can't sit here and keep waiting for them to put all this together right i don't add on the fact that uh it doesn't appear that ben simmons is going to be ready to play anytime soon right. uh he just came out this weekend that i uh, experienced some lower back soreness which is kind of <laughs> odd because he hasn't played <laughs> since right. the playoffs last year he's missed pretty much three fourths of the season right and he's relatively young i think he's like younger than 25 or something right. like so for him to have back soreness right now is kind of kind of crazy i feel like brooklyn got fleeced in this deal um in the end it's going to be it, we'll look at it in the end and it's going to show that it was very lopsided towards philly and it might end up getting philly a ring because of that deal so you know uh my gut initially was to agree with, and when I first saw it, I agreed. But when I really looked at it in the big picture, and I agree, like I said, Ben, I don't know, you 25, son, you ain't played in a year, your back problems and all of this shit, but I'll be honest with you. Durant coming back, and I always thought, we don't know what's going to happen with Kyrie, but watching what Durant did basically by himself last year in the finals against the eventual champions, the Milwaukee Bucks, couple of things that I take away from this trade that I think Brooklyn did to address. One was defense by getting uh, to me, Andre Drummond is the key yeah. to that deal for them. If he can just come in and be Andre and give you 10 and 10 and give you a defensive presence in the middle, I think if you put him with Durant, you know, and last year, that might've been enough to sway it. Right. So that that's the first key part. Now you ask Seth, who really all he has to do just put him in a spot. Yes, he's put him he's in a forgotten part of this trade is, is Seth Curry. That that was huge to get yes. another shooter uh, yes. to run with them. Yeah, I agree with that. So if just on those two principles alone, I agree with you though. You know, we, we're overweighting. Brooklyn has a huge hill to climb from the AC where they are, you know, but we're talking playoffs. Playoffs is a different animal. And if they can at least start out with some type of home court, home court to kind of get themselves cooking, I think they if everything falls right, and this is not including Ben, I think if everything falls right, they can contend. Now, on the flip side, Philly, I'm going to put it out there right now, as far as I'm concerned, and B is the MVP. Yeah, this, uh, yeah this, I would agree. This yeah. dude is at a plateau that there's, there's no one around him. Now, what scares me, though, is we know Harden, and, and funny, I don't know if you saw the picture. I saw some pictures before we got on. He went from, from basically – Dame size to crackhead size in a matter of two weeks. I, you know what I'm saying? We we have a theory on my uh, my Saturday morning show, The Rundown, that James Harden okay. has like fat suits in his closet <laughs> and then he pulls them out when he needs them. Like when he needs to get rid of a, when right. he needs to leave a franchise, right. he goes in the back of the closet, he pulls the fat suit out, puts okay. on the jumper, goes out, shoots some shots. Right. Like, oh, James Harden looks like he's out of shape. Gotta get him out of here. And then they do, and he melts off like forty pounds. And like, okay, <laughs> like so you understand days. what I'm what I'm talking about. But that, oh, yeah. that that scares me in a sense. Like, dude, how committed are you? Because everywhere you've gone, we've seen this same scenario, and I'm just afraid that somewhere along this journey, that old James Harden is going to bubble up and it's going to impact everything Embiid and the Sixers have done this season, and that is the and the sole reason why. Right before the trade, I thought Philly was 
whatever they had figured it out without Ben Simmons. But now I don't know. I'm just worried about the Harden effect because I've seen it happen with Chris Paul. I mean, just about everywhere he's been. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah. The heart the Harden effect just somehow it just melts teams away. And I'm just worried about what's what's going to happen in the playoffs if they have to go through tough times or deal with something, a situation that they haven't done yet as a team, and Harden is going to bubble to the top and it's just going to melt everything away. Uh, you know, I'm not worried about that in Philly because really? he he hasn't really he, well in his career he's never had a big man in the pros that can feed off like he's never had another guy that was in serious contention for MVP the season he played with mm. that guy. Okay, so I think he can kind of he did show in Brooklyn that he can you know Kyrie for all his faults he did basically tell Harden you know I want you to play the point I'm gonna True. play off of you. True, and Harden to his credit played point guard really well distributing no, the did. ball and. If he, he hadn't gotten hurt, I'm not necessarily sure if the Bucks make it to the finals because uh, mm-hmm. he was basically out there on one leg. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm on record. I'm not a huge James Harden fan. I don't care right. what people tell me. That is a travel <laughs> that he's doing. It is. Yeah. Look, I don't <laughs> care. What I agree. It's, it's like it's messing the game up. Like yeah. I, I go, I do a lot of high school basketball stuff, and all I see are high school kids doing that stutter Same step, thing. that mm-hmm. fault, that that step back three or the logo threes or whatever right. that's been ushered in by guys like Harden. And I, I do love Steph Curry. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it can work. Uh, Joel Embiid was saying the other night when it, when Harden had his debut that he wasn't used to being having wide open shots sometimes. Mm. Because of Harden being on the floor, so I think it can. I think it can work. And the, and the 76ers kept a lot of pieces that people thought they're gonna have to get rid of mm-hmm. to get Harden. Mm-hmm. Um, I, looking at the trade though, the uh, the two first round picks now, that could go either Ooh. way because Ooh. you know. It, it, a lot of that's dependent on what happens with Irvin and Durant because yeah, yeah. if all this falls apart and like they got to start all over again, then yeah. those first round picks are devastating uh, yeah. and they'll be high picks. But yeah. if Brooklyn's going to be a contender like they expect to be over the next couple of years, you're basically talking about end of the first round mm-hmm. uh, picks, which are basically high second round picks. So right. those aren't that they look crazy when you see it on paper. But when you really think about it, they basically gave up two seconds. So yeah. That's yeah. for for Harden, a, a former league MVP. And Millsap, which is going to actually probably help that rotation in Philly, too. So, I don't know. I guess both sides want, kind of got what they wanted. But, yeah. again, we don't know what's going on with Ben Simmons. And we still haven't seen him. <laughs> and, it's February, you know, we're late February, early March at this point. And I don't know if we are going to see him. You know, they're saying mental health issues, things of that sort. Yeah. I've seen people saying that, oh, he, they're just trying to get him past the Philly game. And that way he didn't have to play in Philly. Well, yeah, I heard that. If that's the situation where he has to avoid cities, then I don't know if you can depend on him uh, come April or May in the playoffs. So I agree. We'll Kyrie, Kyrie 2.0 uh, going on in Brooklyn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, who knows? So the next one I want to talk, uh, which, I mean, you know, being a being a, being a Knicks fan, and we we used to have the unicorn who now is just corn, um, Porzingis and, you know, a, a second rounder to uh, Washington for – Dinwiddie and Bertrands, and I only bring this one up, like I said, being, being here in the DMV, uh, Porzingis was at one point the next coming of, you know, dot, dot, dot. Uh, I don't, for me personally, being here, I think this was a reach for Washington, um, really hoping that now that Beal is down and hurt that you can give, I guess, uh, some spacing, additional spacing with, you know, Kyle Kuzma and, and, and the rest of the young trio. I think this was a waste personally, uh, but whatever was going on here with Dinwiddie, uh, Montrez, you know, these veterans coming in really trying to instill some work here, listening to the chatter that was going on in the DMV. Uh, seems like ownership succumbed to the youth movement. Uh, and I think Porzingis being more of a laid back guy, not really in your face. I think they were hoping that this would help elevate the team. Me personally living here, I think this was the worst thing in the world. Uh, but I'm interested to hear your take on that as well, Desmond. Um, Porzingis is interesting. Uh, when healthy, he's he's really good, but he's rarely healthy. Exactly. And um, I don't know. I don't know how much this actually helps Washington. I'm not really sure what Washington's doing. Uh, exactly. They probably should have traded Bradley Bill when they had some offers out there. I know the Lakers yep. were after him and a couple of others, and they probably could have did a hard reset when they let when they traded off Westbrook. Yep. Uh, to the Lakers. Yeah. Um. At that point, I know Bradley Bill said he didn't want to go. Uh. But that's just you know Dame Lillard says he doesn't want to leave Portland either. But if you ask him in his living room, he's probably he's probably Come like, all right. Where are we going? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't know. I think uh, 
Washington's curious. I, I'm not sure what they're planning on doing. Uh, it almost feels like they've kind of, well, it does feel like they've given up on this season and by mm-hmm. trading for Porzingis, they're trying to position themselves for a high draft pick. But right. I don't know of anybody in this year's upcoming college draft that's going to make a huge difference uh, with what they are. Plus, the East is stronger. Uh, it's oh, stronger than it's been in like a decade. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it feels like they're just kind of treading water, so I, I'm yeah, not really yeah. sure what's going on with the Wizards. It blew, it blew my mind because I mean, still, uh, you know, they're still in the mix, uh, yeah, in the East, you know. So, yeah. I this one, I don't like you said, when he's healthy, and again, like I said, I've I've been able to watch him when he first came in, thought this dude was the next Dirk and and more. Um, but he's rarely healthy. I thought Dinwiddie and Bertrands and Montrez really gave them something, uh, formidable, uh. And really that you can count on. I think Dallas got the better end of the deal. Bertrand is really, he's really a sleeper. Again, he's another one though. When healthy, um, he's almost like a double double machine. And you know, he's he's high energy. So I don't I don't know really what either team. I mean, I, the Luca and and, and uh Przingis, uh that recipe we I think we all kind of figured uh, after last year that that marriage was over. They just don't see they just didn't seem to be on the same page. Um, so I wasn't surprised, but the destination in the picks uh, or the swap was really a surprise for me. And to cont- continue on, though, really for you guys, like being in Charlotte, like I said, I, we spoke of Montrez. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really think like watching the Hornets, um, man, they is the best squad Mike them put together in a long time. This Probably young. Ever. Yeah. yeah okay, okay right i'm saying ever yeah, yeah it's okay we can we can say it it's yeah right. for real ball out talent from i mean they got about eight dudes that you can just rotate in and out uh and now you add montrez who i think is just a dog he just got that dog mentality um and this one here's a no-brainer you know charlotte got the best of this deal but now having had him because i know i watched a couple of games after the trade i'm interested to know what you see and really how much more do you see Charlotte elevating maybe in the East? Uh, Cause I think they have some chance to make some noise here in the East. They're dangerous in my opinion. I feel like, um, I feel like the Hornets are like a year or two away. They kind of remind me of like the 2012, 2013 golden state warriors. Like okay. um, Steph was young year two, year three in the league, he kept turning his ankles but you can kind of see what they were doing. They were building the draft. They drafted Clay Thompson. They drafted mm-hmm. Draymond Green. Uh, got a veteran over uh, in uh, Iguodala, mm-hmm. and uh, they they started playing small ball. Uh, they still had, um, can't remember the center's name at the time. That they oh, was had. that the uh, what's his name? Bogut. Yeah, uh, they still had Bogut. Bogut, but mm-hmm. Bogut was able to like go outside the paint and do certain things. So it made it where, um, it made it where, you know, they they learned how to play with each other and they didn't have to, you know, build a team on the fly. And I think that's what Charlotte's kind of doing. Mm-hmm. Um, they needed a, they needed a transcendental player, a yep. transcendent player. And that's LaMelo ball. Um, yep. He is literally uh, an all-star. There'll be fools to let him out of Charlotte. Uh, same for miles bridges. That's their, yeah. their, <laughs> uh, their foundation right there. Yep. And then uh, as much as uh, a lot of Hornet fans have kind of poo-pooed it, Gordon Hayward, when he plays, they typically win. It's just yep. that he's been in and out of the lineup with little yep. small injuries. And yep. uh, I feel like them giving up Vernon Carey and Ish Smith, Ish Smith was sitting at the end of the bench, and yep. Vernon Carey was going back and forth from the Hornets to their G League yep. uh, team of Swarm here in Greensboro. Uh, he was a ACC Rookie of the Year, mm-hmm. but a lot of people forget he's still really young. He got drafted yeah. two years ago. He's 20 years old. So, right. I mean, we we haven't had space to use him and the Hornets have a lot of young bigs. Mm. Uh, so it was getting crowded with uh, Kai Jones. They drafted last year. That's yep. a real springy guy. JT Thor. Ooh, all these yeah, guys from the age of 23. Yeah. So monster. one of them had to go. Right. And uh, Vernon, uh, as much as I liked his potential, I, I love having Montrez Harrell in the fold. Uh, small for his size for a center, but, definitely he a dog bring, yeah he brings he a little brings bit you. of like edge to him that they yeah. needed and uh while i don't know if they're able to move up a whole lot well the east is still jumbled i mean i think right. they're in the i think the eighth or ninth spot right now uh you know a little hot streak in the east you can move up a couple spaces well, yeah. pretty quick that's so, what i'm saying yeah. from the yeah. first one through three is like two and a half games but like uh four through 12 is really like separated by like six games and it's like you said if anybody gets on a little hot streak um, at the right time, man, you you can jump up and move up, man, into the fourth spot. 
uh, overnight. And I mean, I say that because I mean, just watching like you know my Knicks last year, same thing like you said. I said to everybody last year, the Knicks, even the Hawks, were a year ahead of schedule. Uh, a lot of what the Knicks did last year, you know, I mean, ba- we're basically at the same point we were last year. Is this that everybody else in the East got better? We really didn't. The Hawks really didn't. Yeah. Um, and when you when you're ahead of schedule, expectation is one thing. And I agree with you. Uh, same thing with Charlotte. I just hope they don't. And again, and this might be a market thing. Um, don't put as much expectation on this year because they like said they're young. They're most of them are under 25. I think they're ahead of schedule, to be honest. Uh, well, they are. But I mean, when you put them like in, in that big, when you starting to look at them to make that move, I mean, I think that the Hornets need one or two other veteran pieces uh, to really stabilize maybe that second unit mm-hmm. uh, to kind of help stay. Because I watched some games where, uh, what game was it? The Bulls game? I, it was before the break or after, no, after the trade. And they were up. But then the game just slipped away. Yeah. And you need another, like Montrez was really in everybody's face and get, but you need another veteran presence, I think, for them to really help understand, like another coach's coach. Yeah, I would yeah. agree with that. And and plus another thing too, and this is really more how the league is going right now, but um, I, I feel like sometimes the Hornets rely too much on shooting threes. Yeah. Like, and a lot of times when they lose the lead, it's because they've gone cold from three. Uh, they keep well, shooting them and they're not hitting them. They need somebody down low they can dump it into to get an easy bucket. Yeah. Uh, it's not Plumlee. Yeah. Um, Harold's not going to get you an easy bucket. He's 6'7". Right. So that's probably the final piece. And they'll probably wait on one of these young bigs to kind of develop into that guy. Uh, right now, it looks like it might be uh, either JT Thor or Kai Jones uh, in a couple mm-hmm. of years. I can yeah. see a lineup with Bridges and Ball and Kai Jones, Terry yeah. Rozier. Yeah. Uh, you know, that that sounds, you know, a couple years out, that sounds frightening. So, yeah. I mean, I, I'm... It I'm is. happy with where they are right now and the moves they've been making and what they've been well, doing. The one thing I wish I agree with you, the three point shooting, somebody needs to tell Kelly Oubre, uh, look, bro, every shot ain't a good shot. Cause anytime he gets the rock, you he got this look in his eyes. Like, yeah, somebody needs to talk to that young fella. Cause talent, <laughs> he's talented, but every shot he takes <laughs> is not a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want to move to, uh, you know, we talked about Dame in Portland. Uh, briefly, you you mentioned him and <clears throat> that that love affair with him and CJ is now over. CJ is in in New Orleans, um, and there's two really trades that really came up again that to me kind of caught my eye. That I don't know if these are good fits or not. And one would be you know CJ going to New Orleans, and then the other was Cam coming to New York. Um, I love I, I love both of these players. Um, CJ is another one that I think he gave you know his heart and soul to Portland. I think he's an underrated player. Uh, same thing coming out of Duke for Cam. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I was higher on Cam than I was both Zion and RJ. I thought Cam had the most NBA-ready game of those three. But I'm looking at it now like, and again, it's only been a short period, but I'm curious to know what you think. Do you, do you think these are good fits for both teams and for both players moving forward? Or um. Not? Well, starting with, cam reddish it feels like uh the knicks aren't playing him um yeah, right it makes it it kind of feels like thibodeau didn't want him so uh-huh. i'm not sure yet that's the jury's still out there uh mccollum's a good fit with new orleans they haven't had a vet, a vet presence there since they let uh jj reddick go um new orleans has bigger problems though like mm-hmm. they I, I think uh i'm not sure how happy zion is there um as as more reports come out and mm-hmm. i you know i i hate it because i you know, I, I really think Zion's a great talent. Uh, he's something we really, well, I don't like saying we haven't seen it before because we've seen a lot <laughs> in basketball. Right, right, right. I, hate, you know, I hate saying, oh, we've never seen this before. I'm like, we, we can't be prisoners of the moment right. because we're seeing a guy that's pretty much an offensive tackle uh, dunking on people. Okay. <laughs> you okay. Know? <laughs> you know, like, we got to slow down for a minute. Let's pump our brakes here. Right, right. But and, and I think the trade was good for both. If the Knicks end up using right. uh, Cam Reddish to his potential, I think, uh, you know, potentially, uh, you know, linking him up with his college uh, mate, mm-hmm. um, RJ Barrett might be good. Who knows? Maybe they make it a trifecta and they go after uh, Zion down the road. Uh, wouldn't that be fun in New York <laughs> at Madison Square Garden? Uh, so. uh, I'm not eating the popcorn yet. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not eating the popcorn yet. I'm not buying any tickets yet. But you bring up something that that I did want to ask too, like really um, in our Q&A segment that we're going to transfer uh, transition into is Zion. Because like you said, I'm like you. I don't want to put 
like something that we've never seen before because we've seen a lot of different types of greatness uh, on the NBA court. Some things are first in a lifetime. Some are first. You know, these things seem to pop up maybe every 10 to 15 years. You'll find another player that reminds you of a player, but it transcends transcends that player because he has a little more athleticism, a little more bounce, whatever it may be. But Zion, and I say this lovingly, you know, he got to put down the beignets down there in New Orleans because I'm, I'm concerned, like, will he ever be the same dynamic player that we have become accustomed to? to seeing uh when and if he comes back what do you what do you take i it's really hard to say i i want to say no um mm-hmm. because I, even people don't really realize that zion's been hurt pretty much every year since like mm-hmm. his junior year of high school like he's had mm-hmm. some kind of injury every single year even the year at duke uh when he, when he, he burst out of his uh shooter in the first carolina duke <laughs> game yeah and had to basically yeah. sit two weeks uh yeah before he came back um missed uh a lot of his uh rookie year played like 60 games last year Mm -hmm. uh and then ended up missing the last like 20 and and now he hasn't played a single game this year he's only played like 80 something games out of three years so i mean i i said it back in when he was at duke that a at duke that was the greatest physical condition he's been in in his life because he had two trainers and doctors watching what he ate i mean Mm -hmm. you can tell like he he, he got a little bit of that baby fat off. He chiseled up a little bit. Yep. And that was perfect conditioning for what he was in. But then you send him to a place like New Orleans Whew. where you've mm. got, you know, everything's fried, everything's seafood, <laughs> po' boys, uh, you know what Word I mean? Distractions. The only what? time we've seen Zion this year is in a Mountain Dew commercial. So that's not <laughs> yeah. a good look. <laughs> Especially for Zion. That's not a good okay. look. So for real. I mean, the, the, the facts are the facts. He's six foot mm. six. Uh, he's the heaviest player in the NBA. He was the heaviest player when he came in. I think yeah. he weighed like 280, 275. Two, I heard, yeah, two, I heard 285, but yeah, that's, you're too, right. much. that's too that's, much for, for his frame. That's a, that's a starting left tackle in the NFL. Yeah. Like yeah. for real, like six, yeah. six, 285, 305. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's about where they want him. And, right. uh, and he, if he played football, he would be playing left tackle and he'd yeah. be really good. Good yeah. feet, great hands. He yeah. moves well, it's quick, you know, mm-hmm. but. Um, the thing I always tell people is that he needed to lose some weight. He has mm-hmm. to get down to about he's six six. He's got a two fifties. Probably got to be his target mm-hmm. somewhere around in there. He can be a little over. He can a be a little under. under. Yeah, but r- somewhere in there, and that'll put him right around like Charles Barkley size, like Ask. early Charles Barkley. Early Charles, yeah, early Charles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he won't lose a lot of his explosiveness or anything like that. He'll still have his size because he does get a lot of his points banging around in the paint. Yeah, but my concern was. Okay, he's twenty. I think he. Uh, I think he's twenty, 20 right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What happens? You remember when you were twenty years old? You could, you know, go all out night. all night, come home at three. Yep. Sleep five hours. Go work a shift. Yep. Eat a stromboli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that. Nap, <laughs> ready to rock and roll. No problem. Here. No problem. Yeah. You know, hop right out of bed. Once you get to like 26, 27, 28, it gets a little bit harder. Things start changing. Things yeah. start changing. Yeah. Your body starts changing. Things yep. start moving around, and mm-hmm. you know. I, I, I wonder what Zion's going to be as a basketball player at age 27, age 28, age 29. Because in the NBA, that's really when guys start to hit their prime. It's from right. like 27 to 32. That's pretty much the prime zone. If you look at all the greats, right? Uh, Jordan, LeBron, LeBron yeah, Kareem, oh, Magic, Kareem, all these Yeah, yep. I mean, they, they all were in their prime right there in that mm-hmm. age bracket. What is Zion in that age bracket? Because I feel like if he's still the same weight, He's not gonna be able to get off the ground the same way, and mm-hmm. that's half his game. So, yeah. what is he at that point? He's an undersized power forward with a lot of weight. He's not uh, Oliver Miller, but no. he would be not Zion. So, yeah, I get what you're I, saying. You know, the Pelicans need to decide because this would have been the period of time to use him at, at his age and his abilities, but they're not even getting that. So, they no. need to decide: can they, while he still has value, do we need to trade Zion to get value for him now? looking down the road because he's had this is his third year in the nba and he's still relatively the same size as when he came in which was yeah. probably too much and he knows that yeah he does you know yeah. he's been told enough that mm-hmm. that's too much but um i think they i think the pelicans need to decide what they want to do uh because they don't want to just go out and say hey we're trading zion but it right. also looks like zion doesn't want to be in new orleans well, either, yeah so, you and, know and that's why i say i go back to my statement in the beginning i'll hold off eating the popcorn on that because as a knicks fan everything that you just said I don't know if I want that guy uh, who's already been damaged goods. Um, 
even if he, let's just say he can get back into top shape, how many years am I going to get? Because now again, we're moving from New Orleans to the Mecca of basketball, where if you're being distracted now in New Orleans, great city, love the city, but you're coming to New York, man, if you, if you even do half, I mean, they're going to rip this kid apart. And yeah. I don't know if I really want to dive into that. And it makes me question, and I don't know, maybe you can help answer, because I've had this debate before with some other friends, you know, players coming out of Duke. Great system players, have some great all-stars, and, you know, uh, your Grant Hills, and, you know, but, like, what happens when these dudes get to the NBA? Because it seems like there's a, I don't know, there's a disconnect, man, with a lot of Duke stars transitioning into the NBA. And I just don't know what that is. Uh, um. See, I'm a Carolina fan, so okay. Well, I, yeah, I, to have this conversation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, the thing is, really, honestly, if you look at all of the one and dones that have come into Duke since really I count 2011 as the first year, I think that was Kyrie Irving, mm -hmm. and from there they've had you know anywhere from one to four one and dones on any given team. If you go back and look at all of them, and all of them first round picks, some second round picks, uh, which one of those guys would you say were clearly better players at the end of that season they played at duke than when they got there most of them are pretty much the same player uh mm -hmm. zion was pretty much now zion got more exposure for right. being at duke he played close to 40 games prime time on, on national tv over the course right. of the season which would have been more than if he had went you know pro first went g league and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so and that and it did help him become the number one pick mm -hmm. but did, was zion a better player like overall when he I left duke so. and what he was so. when he got there it no. felt he was the same guy yeah. uh you know, same with R.J. Barrett, same with Cam Reddish, mm -hmm. uh, same. A lot of the big men mm -hmm. uh, have not uh, worked out, whether it's uh, Vernon Carey or Jabari Parker, um, Marvin Bagley. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, all these guys have become like just rotational guys. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if they had went someplace else besides Duke, maybe they would have been set up for more success. A place like Carolina that actually right. was using bigs. Right. If Marvin Bagley had ended up at Carolina – and or or Zion for that matter, they would have been in more post up sets uh, and playing more of a traditional post up role mm. instead of this whole everybody that's over you know six foot ten wants to be Kevin Durant now. Of so, course, yeah, you know, paint, which drives me nuts. I'm yeah, it drives school, me nuts so too. I'm old school too. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather take the two foot bunny than a thirty footer from the logo uh, <laughs> <agree>. every time. <laughs> I agree. So, I could. I could agree with you more. But I think that's what it is. I think that I think K over the past decade just kind of got to the point where he knew the classes weren't going to be there uh, collectively longer than a year or so. So what's the point of you can't really teach a kid in eight months the Duke no. way? They've I, manufactured I, it, but you can't really teach. I agree. Them. With, I agree with that. He he got on the Calipari uh, bus. You know, yeah. Calipari has been very good at creating one and duns and understand. He, I mean, he's the four at the front of, you know, understanding how to create one and done situations for players. Uh, and he's done okay, I guess, you know, uh, with that. But, yeah, a lot of other coaches, and I see what you're saying, Coach K, kind of over the last decade has, now that I think about it, you know, this is what I have. Uh, I'm not going to be able to implement, you know, a traditional, I guess, Duke program. So we just roll it out and use what we have. So I, I agree and I get what you're saying um, with, with that point. So jumping into things too, then I gotta ask before we go into the to the break. We've been watching everything going on with the Lakers. Uh, mm. you know, my man Westbrook, I call him shot clock Westbrook now because every time he comes down and he pulls up for a jump shot, he's hitting the <laughs> shot clock. He don't even call backboard no more. He's calling the shot clock. Um <laughs> Anthony Davis, who's about as frail as I am. Uh, I think I watched the game the other night with LeBron. I mean, he had a hell of an all-star game, you know. That's how you end it in the weekend and all of that. Yeah. But when I watch him now, and I I, I want to say, I, I I was reading this the other day, uh, an anonymous GM said, LeBron is still good, but let's be honest, he can't carry you anymore. And I want to know, what, what's your feelings on that? Because part of me, I agree with it. And I think it's because we don't want to, I'm a point, I'm not a Lakers fan, never been. I do like LeBron, but I, I've come to the realization that his greatness is is a rare greatness that I've had the opportunity to watch. Uh, and we are coming to the end of, you know, this greatness. And I did kind of side with him. I was like, you know what? You know, that might be a very true statement. He's at the point where now he's not the alpha dog. He's just one of the dogs. And yeah. 
What's your um, take? The crazy thing is he's still playing at a like a high right. elite level. Right. Um, right. How old is LeBron right now? 37? Yeah. 38? 30, 38? Something yeah. like that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, Jordan came back and played two years at 38 and 39 and dropped a couple 40-pointers. And mm-hmm. uh, I think one of those years he played all 82 games with the Wizards. But the Wizards were a lottery team. Um, right. The Lakers were built to try to do some you – know, try to win, win, uh, win a ring. But right. I, I thought when they put the team together this offseason that the pieces didn't fit. And I was more concerned about mm-hmm. – how the Lakers, since they acquired uh, LeBron, how they've gone about basically building these teams um, around him and mm-hmm. AD, uh, mm-hmm. where basically like they clear the whole roster out and bring in these vet minimum guys yeah. where it's going to be hit or miss uh, on who you bring in. And they, they had a chance to go and, and get someone like a Buddy Heald that would have probably been right. a better fit uh, right. for them, but they wanted what him and AD wanted Westbrooks. And, right. uh, I I love Westbrook's tenacity, but for the stuff that they needed for the Lakers team, Westbrook doesn't do uh, the things that they needed. Um, So uh, it's a mess. I'm a Laker fan. Lakers are the first pro team I can think of that I was a fan of growing Mm -hmm. up in the 80s. Uh, Showtime Lakers, Magic, Mm -hmm. Worthy Kareem, you know, all the squad. Great squad. So it, it pains me. To see them doing this, but we did just win a ring like two seasons ago in the bubble. And yeah. and to be honest, if it wasn't for COVID, I don't think they would have won that ring because COVID paused the season. That was an old team. And I, it gave I them, agree. Yeah, it gave them like two months to kind of reset. I agree. And uh and people were like, Oh, it's a disadvantage, blah, blah, blah. It is an advantage to not have to travel on the road as an old team, uh, to not have to play in front of visiting fans. Yep. You're using the same locker room, you're on yep. the same court, same yep. goals. Like that shifted everything to that particular Laker team having an advantage every time they went out on the court. And you just gave a 36 year old LeBron James arrest and an Anthony Davis arrest who gets banged up all the time. Mm-hmm. It just felt like it was snowballing towards that. But I start, I'm starting to feel like that's the last championship that LeBron's going to see, not just like winning, but getting there. Uh, wow. The West is strong, man. Ooh. And they're young. Like, have the battle. I can't say the Lakers would put up much of a fight against Phoenix. Uh, a healthy Phoenix uh, with mm-hmm. Chris Paul, mm-hmm. uh, Golden State, mm-hmm. um, look, the Nuggets I, maybe with uh, I, I, the Lakers I, are healthy. Like, I just there's a couple Utah, like Utah. Like, Nobody, like, yeah. I don't know if the Lakers match up with them well yeah. enough to make this competitive. So they're in trouble. Yeah, I, I man, look, all well said, and I agree with if if the Lakers could. And for me, this season is two things. I mean, well, AD. Before he got hurt again, AD looked like he was playing halfway, like he was already hurt. Like, there was already an injury that we were not made aware of. Um, and I just felt that if they could figure out a way to go inside out like they did that, like you said, the championship year, everything went through AD if they got back to that. And I really felt like Russ – see, Russ is a – and forgive, I want to be very careful in how to, I say this, not to be facetious or like talk, but he's uh, he's in his head all the time. And he really is trying to – and you watch him play with LeBron. He's trying to play to LeBron, you know – and I was like, put him on the second unit. You Somebody have a talk with him. They should have did this in the beginning of the year. Look, you're going to go out with the second unit, and you're going to be the lead dog on the second unit. And yeah. if you let him play like how he normally plays, where he's the man and he has no concerns, I think the Lakers would get more return on that Russ than trying to force him into the starting lineup with uh, you know LeBron and AD. And, I mean, it's to be seen. I think they still have a chance. But like you said, between Phoenix, Golden State, uh, everybody's not talking about Utah. They had the best record in the second uh, last year for most of the season. Uh, you throw in Denver. We ain't even talking about uh, Memphis with Ja and those young boys because those young yeah, boys. Watch out for Memphis. <laughs> Memphis again. That's another example of a a, a young core. Don't uh, care. They just Memphis ball. is where I think Charlotte will be next mm-hmm. year or the mm-hmm. following. Like mm-hmm. they, it feels like they're just a year or so ahead of where Charlotte is in terms of what they're doing to mm-hmm. build their franchise through the draft. Yep. Uh, and they got their their transcendent player in John ja Morant. So. Them boys, um, man. They but ball. yeah, the, the Lakers are just old. Yeah. That's really the main thing. They're just yeah. really old. And yeah, LeBron's gonna be able to, you know, score 25, 27 points because a lot of it's just, you know, they're down by 18 and he there's no one else to shoot. Uh, you know, he's yeah. gonna fill in the stats. But uh, I think the days of us seeing LeBron in multiple finals or we're used to we're accustomed to seeing LeBron in June. Uh, no more. you know, it feels I weird when he's not there. And I think uh yeah, I think those days might be over for for LeBron. I agree. I agree. So look, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll be right back as a pause. I want to take a second to uh, go ahead and shout out our sponsors here to Mike's Up. Uh, so Desmond and I will be right back after the break.
All right, everybody, we back out the break. Your man, Dame DNYDC. Two mics up. Today's guest and co-host, I guess you could say, rock with me today. We talking all stars. My man, Desmond Johnson, Tobacco Tobacco Road Sports, you know, radio, everything he's doing down in the triad. You know, we're going to leave his link in the comment and all of his bio and information. Make sure you check him out, man. Go out here and get his brother some support. You know, just check out what's going on. You know, if you're in a different area like I am here in the DMV, you want to see what's going on down there in Charlotte. Check him out, man. He's doing great work. So, Desmond, we got to ask. So, we mentioned it a little bit before the break. We were talking about the All-Star game. And I, I'm curious, because a couple, myself and a couple of partners, man, we sit down and we talk about, like, I'll be honest with you, I did not watch much of All-Star weekend at all. It, it's kind of dried up to me. Same, yeah. All right, so I think we, we can all agree. And I know I, I have one idea to maybe modify or change All-Star you know, the all-star format, really, um, to kind of give it a little more legitimacy in my mind. But I'm curious, do you think that, you know, maybe we need to modify the all-star format and just change it, period? Um, I don't know if we need to modify it. I, I love what they've done with uh, the game itself, uh, playing it with the rules that are playing now where you, you have to score, you know, get to – it's a winner-take-all, but you get to that certain score and you win the game. So right. you get these, like, walk-off uh, shots or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And you can tell in the fourth quarter, it starts to – they start to play defense. They start to tighten up a little bit. These guys really want to win. The the other parts of it, like the um, like the rising skills challenge and uh, the the rookies playing the sophomores, mm -hmm. all that, that's on Friday nights. That's fine. I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to tinker too much with the three point contest or the dunk contest in terms of what they are. Mm -hmm. What I would tinker with is getting stars to be in them. Um, mm. That was a thing that when I was a kid, you know, yeah, like the three point contest. I think Michael Jordan competed in it one year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Larry Bird was in it a couple of years. Of course, you know, guys made their name off of winning it, like a Craig Hodges or somebody like that, right. where. You know, now you know him as the guy that keeps winning the three point shooting contest right. at All Star break. Uh, same with the dunk contest, where you know it used to be the next guy was right. like the one that won the dunk contest. I was right. the dude you were gonna follow, Michael Jordan, you know, Dominique, Dominique. Yeah. uh, Spud Webb became a yeah. household name because yeah. of that event. You know, it, it, you have to get like guys, and no offense, I know you're wearing a Knicks hat and everything. Don't, don't I, feel bad, I'd say it, say it because I, mean, I said it, <laughs> Obi Toppin. Hmm. Yeah, he I mean, I, I, I don't like the whole um, they get multiple chances after they miss mm -hmm. like it like it. I went back and watched the, in my opinion, the greatest slam dunk contest of all time. Uh, 2016, Zach Levine versus Aaron Gordon. Um, Levine's the defending champ. And yeah. they these two dudes proceeded over an hour Dude, to literally man. just blow the top off of oh, the work. stadium. And they weren't missing. That yep. was the thing. They yep. were hitting first time yep. in, and they were doing the craziest dunks I've ever seen before yep. or since. Aaron Gordon got robbed. He's been robbed twice, Look. which is why he didn't do it this year. He said he wouldn't do it again. Miles Bridges. Yep. But, like, he got robbed the year yep. before. He said he wouldn't do it again. Yep. So, like, you're you're missing young guys that probably should be in this. John Morant should have been in the dunk contest. Yep. Zion should have been in the yep. dunk contest. Um, Miles Bridges. Yeah. trying to think of who else should have been in there we should have had at least one year lebron in the dunk contest and yeah. it's little things like that i'm a lebron james fan i've been a lebron james mm -hmm. fan since he was in high school but i'm not a fan of the whole lebron james is the goat conversation because i'm old enough to have seen the entirety of michael jordan's career college and pro mm -hmm. and the entirety of lebron's career and they just side by side they just don't match up when you're talking about the greatest of all time like mm -hmm. you know when jordan did the dunk contest some of those dunks are iconic. Like we still see them on posters and shirts and stuff today. Like when they're telling the story of Michael Jordan, they're showing those dunks mm -hmm. from the dunk contest. LeBron, it's almost like he's ran from the dunk contest this entire career. Yeah. Yet in a layup line, if you're there early enough, you'll he, see him doing dunk when, contest dunks. It's mm -hmm. maddening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, what are you doing? Why don't you get in there just one time? And it, I think it's the fear of losing it. I think it's the fear of losing the contest. It I would did. put a, a knock on his resume for go it's better for him to not do it at all than no. to do it and now he won't do it because he's you know almost yeah, he's 40, 40. so but, and you you touched on so many points why and I, I think that's why for me again not that i'm not a lebron I, I i appreciate lebron more now but i think you hit on one big point michael had a killer instinct no matter what he did i mean he battled dominique he i mean he battled some of the greatest dunkers in his era yeah 
And yeah. and no, I think that's where his greatness separates him. Same thing on the basketball court. They're two totally unique and individual players. Um, but the thing that separates me and all of the greatness is Michael just had this killer instinct about him. He was going to put his foot in your neck, and you was going to know. He's going to tell you, yeah, my foot is in your neck. Mm-hmm. Where LeBron is more of today's player, the AAU style. Hey, we're all friends. We're all buddies. We're all buddies. Right, that's cool. Like, right, season. right. Come play with me. Right, right. You know, yeah. So two total opposites. And no, look, not to knock his greatness. And I agree with everything you said. And even with the All-Star game and the format. Now, to me, I'm a little bit different. I enjoy, um, the only thing I really enjoy now, honestly, is the Rising Stars game. Mm -hmm. to see the next level of talent coming through the NBA. I enjoy that more than the skills contest. I'll be honest with you, I I enjoy it more than the three-point contest. and For all the reasons that you said, because the stars are not participating in it. Right. Like you said, when I came up, you know, you knew, yo, you're going to have, you know, Michael... Uh, I mean, um, Larry Bird, Reggie Miller, like whoever it was, the top three point shooter. Yeah, the they top... wanted to be in it. Yeah, they, they wanted, wanted to be to in be it. The guy that was the three point king or the dunk champion or whatever. It was a it was a matter of pride yeah. with them. These Today, guys. Yeah, yeah I like don't... you. I like you, man. Let, let's be cool. Like, let's be cordial. Yeah, yeah. Right. We don't want any drama. Yeah, we're just going to. Yeah. So for me, I'm done with it. Now, the one thing I will say that I think would be good. Now, I agree with you. You know, you know, it's like a walk off shot to win the game. But I would change the whole format. I would get rid of this whole friend thing. I'm not going to pick my friends against your friends. I would get rid of these team captains. I would oh, go back. To, yeah. I would get rid of all of that. I would go back to East and West and I would make it like pretty much like baseball. Mm-hmm. Whichever conference wins, that conference is going to get home court advantage. Ooh. And I think that puts a little more emphasis because like, I don't want to wait to the fourth quarter for you guys to start playing. I know you guys if are they, making means. Ooh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I would rather see that. Be- I would be down with that if they went back to the old 80s 232 format to make it okay. fair. You know right. what I mean? Like yeah. because if you because then you you are giving an unfair advantage to whatever conference wins the all-star game because you're gonna have years where one conference is way stronger than the other. But right. if you say in the finals, we're going back to that old school Lakers Celtics 232 format that we did in the 80s because they were That's having to fly idea. across mm-hmm. country or whatever, they don't do it anymore because right. you know it's 2022. But right, if they did that and put that stipulation in there, that would be something. That would be, uh, I think, would make it a little bit more competitive. Um, in the end, though, it probably comes to money. Like, it, it when a team does. gets, you know, X amount of dollars, that kind of thing. Um, same with the dunk contest. You know, if you start, I saw, uh, I think it was Stephen A. that had an interesting theory about inviting guys, like, from gyms and stuff. Like, have a slam dunk contest, like a national yeah. contest. And you take oh, the top okay. four guys. And you put them out there, not against NBA players, but against themselves. And oh, okay, they become the slam dunk champion. If the if the stars don't want it, then let kind of you know, like one a, these mixtape guys do it. I was yeah. gonna say like an N one uh, NBA yeah. dunk contest, and yeah, yeah. Look. which would be. I mean, we see some crazy dunks uh, online from some folks that yeah, will never see a star try to do. Well, yeah. maybe Aaron Gordon, and Zach Levine, they might try to do them, but uh, even they, they don't do this kind of stuff nah. in game. Like nah. Jordan Wilkins, Vince Carter. Mm-hmm. Sean Kemp, mm-hmm. they were they do these dunks in game, like right. they were some of the greatest in game dunkers. Right. So it wasn't like a shock to see Dominique do like a double tomahawk. <laughs> right, we just saw right. him do it against the Nets last week. <laughs> um, and same with Jordan, you know, it yeah. wasn't a shock to see him kiss the rim when we just right. saw him do that to the Hawks on a Tuesday on WGN. So uh, until they start getting the major stars to buy in and do these contests, uh, you're gonna get a little bit of what you got. Uh, the other night, which is stuff like Cole Anthony doing windmill dunks and Timberlands, Look, and <laughs> I can't, I can't even tell you. Like I said, man, I, like I said, when I called it, it was trash, man. I'm just gonna call it what it is. Ob winning, I was like, Ob, you should be sending this trophy to uh Levine or Gordon because yo, like what you did, man, was like pla- It was like a brown paper bag, bro. Yeah. Just, and I'm a Knicks fan. I was just like, you really? I'm like, man, you might as well just go ahead and mail this to, to Gordon or Levine because they were what? real. Ch- <laughs> wasting my when I saw time. the field, I was like, I'm not wasting my time on that. I'm not going to I'm not going to wait till 11 o'clock at night to watch the no, dunk contest. I did the and, same thing. And, and go to bed mad because I, I, I did the same all thing. <laughs> Everybody like, yo, you watching the dunk? I'm like, hell no, man. I'm oh, no. watching something on Netflix. <laughs> I'm I think I was it. watching the 2016 dunk contest. <laughs> I pulled it up on YouTube and sat there and watched that whole thing. So, I mean, oh, I, yeah, it, it, they got a long way to go to get some stuff straight in that. Uh, I don't think they'll do away with it because it's kind of ingrained in All-Star Weekend. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, they got to get the stars back in there. Agreed. So, speaking of stars, 
and I want to I want to push and fast forward to you know during the weekend, um, you know celebrating the 75th anniversary team, and I don't know if you had a chance to watch or even paid attention to the list, but you know what are your thoughts on a, on a 75th anniversary team? Should there have been maybe one or two players higher or lower? You think any players were overrated, underrated uh, on that list? Um, two things. Um, we just had this conversation on my show Saturday morning. Uh, one, I think Dwight Howard should have been on this list. Without um, question. I think he gets a lot of grief for the middle part of his career. But if you just look at his first eight years in Orlando alone, that should have been enough for him to qualify top 75 Agreed. of all time. Uh, Agreed. One of the greatest defensive players of all time. Led that Orlando team to an NBA Finals that they probably had no business being in. Um he should have, I don't know how high he would have been, but he should have been on the list. So I, I feel agree. like when they do the NBA 100, he should be one of those 25 that got left out that gets put on Clay Thompson as well. Yeah. Um, at the top of the list, uh, ESPN did this thing where they actually ranked the top 75. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we had been paying attention to that and what they had had on there. And, uh, I've, I've had Steph Curry in my top 10 all time players, since uh, probably since the beginning of this year i moved mm -hmm. him into the top 10 and the way espn had their list i took out oscar robertson and replaced mm -hmm. it with steph at like number nine so like my my top 10 of all time number one michael jordan mm -hmm. uh number two cap kareem mm -hmm. uh number three lebron mm -hmm. four magic five kobe six bird uh seven wilt eight bill russell nine steph curry 10 10 tim duncan okay. uh and then you've got like guys right out of like shack at 11 hakeem at like 12 that kind of thing mm -hmm. uh and and for me with steph steph's the only player in nba history to have won the the league mvp award unanimously like yep. every report of hands won. down yeah jordan never got that shack never got that uh no no one no mm -hmm. one's ever done that before so that's a huge deal um the dude is unbelievable. He's just unbelievable. Yeah. He's one of those guys. There's one guy every generation that when he plays basketball, you follow him around the court, even when he doesn't have the ball. Like when you're watching at home, yeah, yeah. I, I find myself just watching Steph, like what he's mm -hmm. doing. And he's constantly just running <laughs> like mm -hmm. the whole game. He's just yep. running around, yep. running around, yep. running around. Then he'll get it and do something ridiculous. And, uh, the, this whole thing he start he's been doing the past couple of years now where the warm ups and all the shots and no not that I'm talking about like in game when he'll oh, shoot that side Christ. three by the sideline and turn Christ. around and, like, yeah he, 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 he telling you he turns around <laughs> and like stares at the front row yeah, yeah. as it's still in the air yeah. and it goes in behind yeah. him and then he runs he skips off down the court it's yeah. the coldest thing I've ever seen on a basketball mm -hmm. court the dude is shooting a thirty foot three pointer. And turn around, not even he's not. I haven't seen one where he's done it and turned around and he missed it. Yeah, uh, it's crazy to me that he's able to do this. And he did that in the all star game a mm -hmm. bunch, uh, last week and scored 50 points on the world's best players. And he literally lost it in the third quarter, like he yeah. just started shooting from everywhere, everywhere, the logo, everywhere, the front row, everywhere, <laughs> just like all yeah, over everywhere. the place. And it gets to a point where players stop playing, they start watching him, yeah, and yeah. that's when you start getting to like. Okay, we need to start considering this dude like mm -hmm. as one of the all-time greats. Yeah. Uh, in my lifetime, and now that I say this, Shaq probably should be in my top ten. In my, I probably would swap him and Tim Duncan. Mm -hmm. But in my lifetime, there's only been three players that I feel like have changed the game of basketball itself in terms of like how kids play in their their driveways, how it's played at AAU, how they play in college, mm -hmm. and what the NBA itself is doing to try to stop what that player does. One's Michael Jordan. One is Shaquille O'Neal, and one is Steph Curry. If you look at those three careers and what the NBA was while they were playing and what the NBA implemented to try to stop them from being who they were, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Mike showed you could build an NBA team uh, from the outside in. Mm -hmm. Before Back then, I mean, think about it. Everyone was laughing at the Bulls because they drafted right. the guard third overall, and right. they were like, well, he's not seven foot tall, so now they're going to win anything. Right. He changed that narrative, so now you get a team like Golden State or right. – uh, you know, small ball teams like the Hornets or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that exists if Michael Jordan yeah. didn't become Michael Jordan. Shaq, mm -hmm. Shaq 2000 is probably the most unstoppable figure of all Force time. Force of nature, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You, you couldn't guard him. You needed three dudes. Even yeah. that wasn't going to work. Yeah. Dude's got guys hanging off his arms. Yeah. Going for dunks. Like, he was just unstoppable. They changed the way they, they, they played defense mm -hmm. uh, because of Shaq. And then with Steph, Steph is just like, it, go to any high school gym 
<laughs> in the country. And you're going to be seeing little six all, foot guys shooting 28, 29. They're all three. doing it. They're, they're all, all doing, doing it. Doing it's it. because of him. It's yeah. He looks like the everyman. He doesn't look like LeBron. Line mm. everybody's 6'9", show them 260. Luga. You know, Luga. he just looks like the dude you would see at the yeah. Y. Pick him yeah. up. He's doing, uh, doing his just, thing. Just run. So yeah. everyone feels like they can do it. So mm-hmm. those three guys have changed it. Right now, Steph is right there. So, again, that's another bullet in the whole LeBron is GOAT thing because in his in LeBron's career, there's always been someone else that you could say might be the best player in the league that year. It's been LeBron and someone else, whether mm-hmm. it was LeBron and Kobe, LeBron and KD, KD yeah. mm-hmm. LeBron and uh, Steph, mm-hmm. LeBron and Kawhi for like a year or two mm-hmm. there. There's always been someone else that right. he's had to be compared to. With Jordan, after 88, there was no comparison. Exactly. Everyone in the league knew, everybody watching it, Jordan is the greatest player on the planet in 88. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and then, So we knew going into this championship stuff who the dude was. LeBron was still questioning it. So whenever somebody brings up LeBron versus Jordan, LeBron's the GOAT, and blah, 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 I'm like, nah. that's not it. That's it, just it, not it. it. It's just not it. I love two, him. It's not it. It's two different eras. It's two different type of things. And like I said, I, I look at, like you said, I look I look at different things. I look at a little differently, like, like players that change the game. I, I go back. I might be a little bit older, like Dr. J being mm-hmm. the original Michael Jordan that really brought from that ABA style, brought that flair to the NBA right. and really living above the rim with him, uh, Calvin Thompson. And I mean, David Thompson and, you know, all of those guys kind of bringing that. Uh, and it, it transcends over time. And you see the NBA evolve and develop over time. Um, there's no questioning uh what's happening um with michael jordan in the michael jordan era you know that baton went from magic and larry isaiah mm-hmm. to mike and mike took it and ran yep. and i think there's no no comparison because like i said his killer instinct though is where it was different like i said back then you didn't have guys wanting to play with each other there yeah. was no way that larry was going to sign up to play with mike Mike wasn't going to sign to play up with MJ. Like, these guys just weren't doing it. So I think that's where, to me, the difference lies where LeBron and these guys came up in an era where let's all be friends. Let's all be happy. Let's all, you know, share this together. And the other side of it, too, because LeBron hasn't won six championships either. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's lost six. He's yeah. lost six, right. Yeah. He's probably <laughs> lost more than most people, but he hasn't won that many championships. Like you said, though, the NBA has now found a way, though, too. I think they're marketing – and promotion now understands like let's share the wealth where that NBA with Jordan, it was always about usually the single star. Today's mm-hmm. NBA is about broadening the spectrum, which may have actually hurt LeBron um in the GOAT conversation, but to me it's no comparison. Uh and, and I agree with you. Steph has to be um recognized as one of the greatest players, period. The way he's evolutionized the three-point shot. Uh, the game, he reminds me, honestly, when I watch him, he reminds me of Reggie Miller. Hated Reggie Miller to death. But the movement, the constant movement, the zigzag, yeah. the nonstop, he and Clay, um, look, if they are not one of the top two backcourts to ever play. Shooting wise, I think they got to be. I they can't get another look, and that's what he, like this. You, you, you smoking if you don't think that those two are in, at least in the top two. Splash Brothers. Like, I don't know of any other like shooting wise scoring mm-hmm. wise. I mean we've saw we've seen Clay Thompson score well he scored like 60 something points that's what I'm saying like and it, on like 11 dribbles or something crazy that one night it was sick man and it's and like three quarters <laughs> how, how do you not you when know? they get hot in their own they're fun to watch and they are. uh they are. I really wish that they had never went and got Kevin Durant like I, I really do because I feel I like it makes it where two of those three rings that they have I feel like we're just it's like tarnished. Tarnished. yeah you know, like it just feels like they're not, they're just not the same. And uh, I know Durant's not going to care because in the end, it's just going to show him with two rings and, you know, right. two finals right. MVPs. Right. And nobody's going to really talk about in the history books how he got there and what happened before and the history and the story. But for those of us that watched it, it's, I think it's tarnished Kevin Durant to a Agreed. certain degree. I don't right. think we'll ever look at him as a, a GOAT potential type player. Uh, right. With Steph, I think it helped him because he stepped back during those two years when Durant was there. And as soon as Durant was gone, he picked it right, right back, back up. Right back was. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I think it actually is going to end up helping Steph in his career uh, that Durant left. Um, I think Golden State getting ready to start a second little run here. Uh, yeah. It would not surprise me at all if they win the NBA championship this year. Um, and they still got young dudes like James Wiseman, who hadn't even played yet this year, I believe. Uh, They've right got 
some youth. They've got young pe- you got, they yeah. do have some young pieces that and really with carry shooters, with shooters you can go a little bit longer than if you were like a uh, like a, a Russell Westbrook right. where right. you're depending on your athleticism and get you to the cup mm-hmm. Steph and Clay can play until they're mid 30s you I know agree. maybe later not you I know agree. just off of their shooting ability so it, it's going to be interesting to watch you know you bring up a great point something that I want to ask so we're going to go through this really quick um, we're talking about guards, guard play, 75th anniversary NBA, NBA All-Star team. You know, I like the snubs. I agree with you. Dwight Howard was snubbed. Uh, I think Dame Lillard could have been on that list. Uh, a few players. But we're going to talk about people at their peak. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this up real quick. At their peak. You know, you got to start one, bench one, and cut one. We're talking Ooh. about Kyrie, Dame, and Russ. At their peak. <laughs> and interested oh, to hear man. your take on that one. Oh, throw that back up again? Yeah, sure. Uh you got Kyrie, cut one bench, one cut one. Okay. Yeah. Um all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start with cut one first. Uh okay. I'm gonna cut <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna cut Dame. Okay. Um I'm gonna start in their prime. In their prime. I see, I don't know when Kyrie's prime is. And, and the, the, you're funny because the only reason why I threw this, I was just having this conversation <laughs> last <laughs> week, when, and when I was having the not? same, and I had the same question, <laughs> like when was his peak? He's never played 82 games in a season, has he? Okay, and like but, I, you know, I'm changing that. I'm cutting Kyrie. I'm cutting Kyrie. <laughs> I don't need Kyrie. He's not not dependable. I don't know if he's gonna be here the whole season. Okay. Yeah, I'm cutting him. Um, I'm benching Dame, and I'm gonna start Westbrook. Out of the three, he's the only one with an MVP trophy. Um. But even that, I don't feel good about. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't feel really comfortable Look, about either one of them. Dame hasn't really won anything, but he's exactly. in Portland, so it's like exactly. But he's made his bet. He said he doesn't want to leave Portland. He probably could have been gone by now. Look, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Your your answer was pretty much the same as mine. <laughs> but I had to throw it out there because myself, like I said last week, we were talking about this man, and it got to a point when I, I was like, "But hold on a second, man." When the hell was Kyrie's peak? When, like, when it, I mean, would you say it's like twenty? What the one year the that they they won the team when they won the right. title? And uh, the, and I, like you said, I had to look at the rest. I was like, well, hell, Russ has been multiple MVP. He's a triple double machine. Yeah. And you know, like I said, my same takeaway was too. Like, I love Dame, but Dame stuck in Portland, and you know, so I kind of went the same route that you did. Um, and I just wanted to share that. So I have well, one more. Then, mm-hmm, wait, before you do that, then again, though, Westbrook's peak was on a team with no nothing else with him. So, you know, was he stat padding? You know, does he get the, the triple double for the season if he still has the rant there? You know, so it, it's a loaded question, man. It was, it was a little. I'm gonna write that down for, uh, for rundown. <laughs> my guys say because that's yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> it, 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 it was, man. We we debated that thing like we got we were almost arguing in here, man. Like, it was crazy. Okay. So I figured I would tell this one on the show, but I got another one that we got we okay. got into a little uh, heated discussion about. So oh, we got no. th- we got we got three MVP candidates this year, right? Hmm. Same question. Start one, bench one, cut one. We got Joker, Giannis, and Embiid. Whoa. And I thought this was a great one too. <laughs> oh, um, man, that's really hard. Uh, honestly, I'm probably mm. right. <laughs> <laughs> My first inclination is to say start Giannis, mm-hmm. uh, because Giannis to me feels like the closest we in 2022 can see what a uh, young Wilt Chamberlain would have looked like playing in today's NBA. Like, I feel like Giannis is the closest to what he might've looked like uh, if he was today. Okay. Um, having said that, I love big men and I don't want to, mm, Joel has mm-hmm. cut off the the whole shooting a bunch of threes thing. That was about Giannis too. That was bothering right. me a lot. Like, why are right. you out there? <laughs> like get right. in the paint. Seven right. foot get in the paint. Get in right. the paint. Right. And 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 in that that clinching finals game, that's what Giannis did. That's he, what he did. He started at the top of the key. Mm-hmm. He put his head down, and he basically just right. ran at whoever yep. was in front of him and dared them to try to stop him, and he couldn't. And he yep. just would get to the cup each time. And he, it's like he figured it out. We were like right. watching him figure it out. Right. Um. I think that performance actually made me a Giannis fan. He already had a couple MVPs before that. Same here. You I know, like, a, I was still a little skeptical. Like I haven't seen him a whole lot here in North Carolina. Uh, I'm not even sure if I want to watch this Suns Bucks finals, but it's the NBA finals. Let me just see what fan. it is. And yeah. I stuck around and watched the whole finals. Mm-hmm. It was actually really good finals and became a Giannis fan yeah. uh, at the end of that. Um, I think I would probably, 
the thing is, the most skilled big man out there that you showed is Jokic, probably. So exactly, that was, and that was really where things. <laughs> that's where things turned in our conversation uh, because he's you an can't, MVP too, isn't he? you can't, you. That's okay. what I'm saying. You can't sleep on. He's probably the most <sighs> skill set wise. Yeah, yeah. From compared skill, to those two guys, he's, right? He's, yeah. I guess it depends on what you want. So, well, it's me. So who? who <laughs> <laughs> um, I for me personally, I would, I would probably start Embiid, sit Giannis, and cut Jokic. Yeah, that's crazy. I, so I, <laughs> I, I kind of went the other way. And this one, this is where it was crazy for me. Um, I said I, I would start uh, Embiid. Only because right now, just talking today, and I had to make sure I made it clear to everybody. I'm talking about in today's NBA right now, this season, I think Embiid is having uh, by far the most standout uh, season as right. MVP candidate. Then I had to really think skill set because I am more of a I prefer for big men to have skill sets that can do multiple things. Me too. And this is where I got, and we got to a huge. I'm a big Giannis fan, but I would cut Giannis. Only because I, <laughs> because I think Joker has more of a skill set today than Giannis does, and I and I, we argued about athleticism over skills, and I understand athleticism can do a lot of things for you, but from a skill set point, I think uh, Joker's a better passer. I think he sees the floor better from the post. I think he can give you more. He can spin out and make a pass. He can read. You know, there's a lot of little things. I'm talking about the lit. I mean, we talk yeah. about the most minute things. Yeah. So in in that one, we we like I said again, that was a whole nother argument. So I just uh, wanted to share that. I you know I I think I picked mine based off of like ceiling. Like who do okay. I think has a higher ceiling? And okay. I think Jokic is probably at his ceiling. I would yeah. think. Yeah. I can't imagine being better than where he is right I now. Agree. I agree. I don't think we're at Giannis's ceiling. Like Not I don't think he's all. got to his peak yet. So Not at all. Uh, I don't know if I could do it. And then B too. Uh, yeah. We couldn't be in the same boat. Yeah. I don't know. I think this whole thing with Harden coming over there is going to blow up mm. uh, in a positive way for the 76ers. It's going to expose parts of Harden's game and Embiid's game that they might not have even been aware of that they had because mm. they didn't have another guy like the other to play with Understood. their whole career. So, um, yeah, Jokic would still be cut on mine just because I feel like he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's probably at the peak of his powers. Yeah, I'm more, Giannis feels like that supervillain that's just now realizing he can be a supervillain. From like, watching him, man, know? I really think he has the greatest ceiling because I think his potential to do all of the other things that those two are doing right now, I think he has, I agree with you, he has the potential to be so much more right? Uh, than the other two. Uh, and I just thought it was a great conversation, man. And I just wanted to uh, really throw it out and share with another NBA fan, another person who enjoys talking sports. It's hard, man. It's hey. hard. I'm upset. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. These are great in, in, in-house arguments that we had. And I mean, if you please feel free to, to share on your show, man, I'd be interested to tune in and, and hear what you For guys, sure. you and your friends yeah. talk about, man. This is a great take. Um, but that's it today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, another great episode. Uh, my brother Desmond Johnson joining us here today from Tobacco Road. And I'm going to, before we go, uh, Desmond, please again, Take a moment, man, to share your information with those who are listening today. Uh, and if you guys are listening, you know, whether you're audio streaming or you're watching this uh, live here on our YouTube channel, make sure you go ahead and, and jot this information down. It's down at the bottom uh, and support our brother Desmond and all the work that he's doing down in, down in uh, the triad there. Yeah. So uh, Tobacco Road Sports Radio dot com is where you can find. Uh, our site where our home players are. Um, we again, we're the home for North Carolina AT Athletics. So, if you're uh, a big HBCU fan, uh, we carry their football, we carry their men's basketball, uh, their weekly coaches' shows. Um, we have syndicated shows that are on terrestrial radio stations in North Carolina, uh, on Fridays and Saturday mornings. Uh, sports talk shows, we, we do a lot of uh, North Carolina centric stuff, so heavy on the Charlotte Hornets, heavy on Carolina Panthers news. Uh, ACC uh, football, ACC hoops. Uh, we typically have a lot of uh, well-known beat writers um, that cover those teams from like The Athletic, USA Today, uh, Yahoo, uh, ESPN. We, we, try to, we try to fill a hole in the triad where uh, we're trying to cover stuff that the local media either has avoided, ignored, or they don't have the manpower to do it anymore that we've learned that the public wants to know. They, they want to know, you know what happened in the Hornet game last night or what mm -hmm. quarterback are the Panthers going to be drafting or 
uh, you know, what's going on with Wake Forest, you know, like right. that kind of stuff. So we right. we're able to get a lot of stuff in just from where we are uh, in the heart of North Carolina. You can follow us at Tobacco Radio on Twitter, um, face on Facebook. It's at Tobacco Road Sports Radio uh, on Instagram. I believe it's Tobacco Road Sports Radio as well. Um, some of our live shows are streamed there also. So whenever uh, we're on and we're on live, you can interact with the show, actually ask questions, leave comments while we're on and we'll address them while we're on air. So you can really feel like you're a part of the conversation. And um, this is year two of Tobacco Road and we're growing pretty fast. I uh, want to give you a shout out, Dame and your folks for uh, finding me and, and asking me to come on board your platform. I really appreciate that. And uh, hopefully we can return the favor down the road get you on one of our rundown Saturday morning panels so we can uh, get uh, get your opinion on some things. And uh, that's pretty much it. Like if you're looking for sports, but reported in a different way and with a focus on the kids in particular, uh, check us out at tobacco road, sports radio.com. Will do man. And again, kudos to you. I want to give you a round of applause for, for the work that you're doing in the community. Oh, man, down appreciate it. Shout and out to you too, man, for everything you got. Anything you. you guys need, just let me know. And hey. uh it will hook it up. It's the same thing here, man. You know, uh, I tell everyone that that's been a part of our show, you know, this is home to you. Anything that we can do, same thing, you know, whatever we can do to help support, promo, whatever it may be, you know, please feel free to reach out to us, man, and we will do our best to make sure to share and air your content and do whatever we can to uplift each other and uplift our communities because that's what Two Mics Up is all about. Uh, we could not do this without others. Uh, like yourself that are putting in the work daily, man. So again, kudos to you and continue continued success in all that you do in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. You know, we're getting ready to close out this fantastic conversation. You can follow two mics up online at www.twomicsup.com. You can follow us across all our social media, IG, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at two mics up. And if you're watching today's show and if you haven't done it already, Make sure you go ahead down there, you hit that subscribe button. Make sure before you leave, you go ahead and click that bell so that you can be notified by all the newest content coming to you from us here at Two Mics Up. And like we always do at this time, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe, stay blessed. Mike's out.